What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. Today's video is going to be a Q&A that I had you guys ask me some questions on my Instagram. If you guys aren't following me there, I'd suggest you guys follow me there. Description or link is down in the description. I post on there daily as well as my TikTok a few times a week as well. So we have seven questions on here. A lot of them were repetitive or so similar that I kind of just combined two questions in the one, so hopefully this will be nice and concise for you guys today. The first question on here is the most common question that I get by far. Weird question, but are you single? So I figured I'd get this out of the way. Yes, I am. Last time I was in a relationship was 2020, basically right before I moved out here. One of the reasons why I did end up moving out here was because uh, that relationship that I was in ended. Would you, <laughs> now we're just going straight into real estate here. Would you refinance a property for more cash flow or keep the current mortgage for a faster payoff? I really, really, really like this question. It's actually a question that I ask myself often. It really depends on where you at, where you are at in your life and in your investing career. So basically this question is asking if you should refinance a property to pull cash out. And I assume you're gonna pull cash out of a property to invest in another property. This is also known as like leveraging your money. If you put $300,000 down or you put, you bought a house for cash for $300,000, all of that $300,000 is going towards that one house. Yes, if you're renting it out, your cash flow monthly is going to be higher. Or you can leverage your money and you can use that $300,000 and separate it between five different properties that are all cash flowing. Yes, they may not cash flow as much as the one property because it's fully paid off with no loan, but you have cash flow from five different properties, which I almost guarantee is gonna add up more than that one property. And you're getting appreciation on all five properties, not just one property. So to answer your question, if the rates make sense, if your refinance makes sense for that specific deal, and you're in your investing career early on to where you're looking to expand and build cash flow, I would certainly refinance it, restart that 30 year loan, get a lower interest rate potentially, pull some cash out and reinvest that. Now, if you're just pulling cash out to blow it on a car, I would say uh, keep your current mortgage and just keep that cash in that specific property. But if you're just gonna keep pulling cash out, investing, pulling cash out, investing, that's a very popular method. Now, if you are later on in your investing career where you don't wanna have a lot of risk, you don't wanna have a, a larger loan amount on a property, you don't wanna have as many loans, maybe you're close to retiring or just wants a little bit of passive income and you're not looking to do a lot of investing, keeping your current mortgage on it so it pays off faster or potentially if you're still sitting on a lot of money, start paying it down so you don't have a loan whatsoever. But this is more so if you're like a safer bet, you don't want any more cash flow towards the end of your investing career, whatever it may be. So I like this because I've been thinking about paying off one of my properties, but then I keep reminding myself, I'm like, this money is so cheap to me. Like these, my interest rates on half of my properties are under 4%. I'm like, this is basically like free money. Why would I take a lump sum of money out of my bank account to pay off a property. Yes, I'll cash flow a little bit higher, but I don't think I'm, I'm not, I, I am not near where I wanna be in my investing career to start paying off my properties. I'd rather use that to buy more properties. I have a lot of goals to build cash flow and eventually they'll all get paid off or who knows, maybe I'll just keep refinancing, pulling cash out. But I, I find a good middle ground between that. Like I'm not a huge leverage guy where I'm gonna absolutely maximize leverage. All of my properties I buy right now are 20%. So I still do put a good chunk of my personal money into these, but I don't think I'll pay any of mine off. Or if I had a good opportunity to refi, I certainly would. Are you hands-on with a lot of your properties? Good question. I tend to visit my properties depending on how busy I am. Right now, I'm not busy at all, so I like to visit my properties as much as I can. It also depends on how far away they are. I will never really do any work. I'll, like, I've, like I said, at the beginning of my flipping career, I, I tried to do door handles and cabinet handles, but then I realized I'm like, this is taking me three hours where I can pay my handyman $20, $25 an hour to do it in 20 minutes. I'm like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's just not worth it for me to go out there and sweat and put in all this extra work when someone else can do it much, much faster. So I don't do a whole lot anymore. Sometimes I go and pick up trash because it's a lot easier. I know that I'll go out there and actually do it. A lot of these contractors will say they'll do something and then it's like they drag it on. And if it's something that needs to be done like trash removal or sweeping or cleaning a little bit, I'll go do it if I need to. Do you ever get bored of running around and working? How many rentals until you retire? So I guess this is two different questions, but he asked it in one. 
How many rentals until I retire? Well, my original goal was $8,333 a month, month, which would equate me to $100,000 a year. But I, I can retire right now with the amount of cash flow that I get, but I also don't want to live the way I'm living right now for the rest of my life. Like I'm living the way I am right now, like relatively cheap every single month. I don't want to say cheap. Like I am still in, like I'm going to Vegas next week. I'm going to um, overseas the week after that. So I'm not cheap, but I don't like to go and like spend hundreds of dollars on drinks every single week, weekend, I should say. Um, so I can retire right now if I wanted to, but I, I eventually, like I want my, my enjoyment in life to, it's going to require me to spend a lot more money. I want to take more and more trips more often. So, um, how many rentals until I retire? I don't know how many rentals I would say like cash flow. Probably twenty thousand dollars a month cash flow. I'd be like pretty happy and still be able to do literally whatever I wanted, buy whatever I want, but also still have um, extra income coming in to continue to stack up my passive income, whether that be rental properties, wherever I get it. But um, yeah, about twenty thousand. I thought eighty three hundred and thirty three dollars a month would do it, but I don't think once I get there, I don't think I'm gonna be content with how much money that is. But yeah, you have to set high goals and the one eighty three hundred and thirty three dollars I thought was gonna be great when I was twenty five when I first started investing. Now that I'm almost twenty nine, I gotta set the goals a little bit higher here to just do things that I want to do. Um, and how do you ever get bored of running around working? I absolutely love working. I drive myself absolutely insane if I'm not working, if I'm not feeling productive. For the last like two months it's been the slowest time in the last three or four years for me. So that's actually been driving me crazier than actually working 12, 16 hours a day. So to answer your question, do I ever get bored running around and working? And no, does it get repetitive sometimes? I guess, but I still really do enjoy it. I just love the process of knowing that I'm progressing in life and being productive. Bored is like the worst thing, I think, the worst feeling that you can possibly have. How long did it take you to get your first booking on Airbnb? I posted it around noon, one day in February and probably 6 p.m. I had two or three bookings on it, so it happened really fast. What credit cards do you have right now? Um, I have like 14 or 15 different credit cards. I generally open two to three at one time. The most recent ones I got was the Apple card and the hotels.com card because of the sign-up bonus. I will always get sign up, go after sign-up bonuses for the most part. The hotels.com one was no annual fee. Free sign up and you get three free nights after spending a thousand dollars, I think. So uh, that's like a three three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollar value. I do love the chase cards though. I will put my favorite chase card down below if you guys are interested. It's the Marriott one. It's an incredible sign up bonus right now. So be sure to click that link uh, if you guys haven't had that one yet. I think you get like three free nights or something like that, like one hundred fifty thousand points, and then you also get. It's an annual fee one, but you get one free night every single year, and that is definitely more than the $95 you're spending. So if you go into one hotel room a year and it's a Marriott, it, this card would make sense to you. And my camera died again. So last question, what is your favorite thing about real estate? The way I'm gonna answer this is kind of like a double-edged sword. I love the flexibility. I love that I am completely dependent on myself. I don't have to rely on someone else someone else's decision or someone else, whatever it may be, like the amount of money I'm making is because of me. So that's also can be a negative. If you're a person that just likes to be told what to do and just put your head down and work, this is not a career for you because you're gonna have to create your own leads. You're gonna have to create your own work in a sense. As an entrepreneur in general, like that's one of the hardest things for me is like I love working. If someone gave me a huge list of just to, to knock things out, I would do that like, 12, 16 hour shifts. That's why I love bartending because it's like I'm working, I know what I'm doing, time flies. I don't have to figure out what the next step is. I love doing stuff like that, but it's also a very big challenge as an entrepreneur. You don't have a big check. Like you have to create your own work. You have to create your own income. You, no one's gonna be telling you, okay, here's what you have to do next. Here's what you have to do next. If you don't create any of that for anything for yourself, every single day you're just gonna be sitting around hoping for something to fall in your lap which just doesn't happen in real estate you're gonna to have to go out create your own leads however that may be you're gonna to have to get on a team which may send you some leads but you're still gonna to have to do your own work you're gonna to have to show up on your own no one's telling you to show up or for the most part so I like that but I also 
can see how it stresses me out a little bit as well. Uh, for the flips, it's the same situation. If we're not generating our own leads, if we're not buying these properties, no one's just setting these properties in our lap. We have to go out and whether it be social media, handwrite letters, build rapport, build connections with these wholesalers. Like It's still a lot of work to get to the point where you just get deals sent to you and you still have to keep those connections as well to keep getting those leads. We kind of slowed down a little bit uh, buying properties. We haven't bought in the last three months, so we're not getting sent we're getting sent maybe 10% of the properties that we got sent earlier this year. So now we have to build that back up and that's all on me. Like no one else is gonna build that for us. Um, so that's my favorite thing about real estate, the flexibility. Like I'm going to Vegas for one day next week for 24 hours with some friends and we just, like I don't have to think about calling off. I don't have to like think about rescheduling anything. If I wanna go somewhere, I will literally book a ticket two hours before and just go somewhere. I can pretty much do all the work from my laptop uh, anyways, which is, <laughs> I mean, I've never had a normal job, so like, it may seem, like to me, it seems so normal, but I'm very, I gotta remind myself, I'm very, very grateful to have that flexibility because a lot of people would want that. Um, but it also brings a lot of stress with, okay, like you can't just constantly, you have to create your own work, you have to figure some things out on your own. So that's the downside to it as well. And someone asked that, someone's like, what's the biggest negatives to real estate? So I guess I just answered that right there. Thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate it. Drop a like, drop a comment. Um, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed.